go through this real quickly, and then I'm going to hand it off to Beth and then to Gretchen, and then I'll wrap here uh, so you can get on with your regular course tonight or today. I want you to kind of think differently about this travel than maybe other travel you've done with friends or family. Uh, I have a particular philosophy, and the philosophy is kind of stated there. We're there to learn about different cultures. Expect it to be different. I'm always surprised that people come over and go, they say, I don't like the food here. I don't like the way these people dress. This place is strange. Oh, you mean different? As in foreign? foreign? <laughs> if, if I thought you knew that we were going to another country, I know, but it, you know, it's just not like Texas. I know. <laughs> you know, I love it when students say, I ate something I've never eaten before. I met someone I didn't know. I tried a new Italian phrase, I, and it worked, and someone smiled and said, you know, thank you or whatever. I love it. We are, and this is really important to me too, just kind of as a citizen of the U.S. and a citizen of the world, I think this is really important. We are guests in their country. We are guests. Um, politeness and consideration really goes far. You know, you say buongiorno, right? Everybody say Buongiorno. You do that when you walk into someone's store or restaurant. Buongiorno. It's just, it's a arrivederci, right? Um, and you walk out, right? You don't just kind of, <laughs> right? Because they think you're rude. You may be shy, okay? I understand that. But some people think, like, this is so rude. And you, 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 you are aware of your space in public. Americans have a reputation for being a little bit loud and boisterous. Uh, kind of walking in like we own the place. Um, and Europeans tend to somewhat, yeah, it's a terrible over exaggeration, but it's kind of true when you think of it. They're a little bit more reserved in public usually. Um, they tend to dress a little nicer in public in many places than Americans do. I mean, we go with, with like the yoga pants that are like way too low. Um, you can do the white scene the people at Walmart. Um, <laughs> this is like, it's like you would just never see it. I actually had one of, the first, one of the first times we ever went to Spain. I had some, some of the girls come down to breakfast at the hotel still wearing their PJs. And the lady in charge of the breakfast went bananas. She just was like, you can't do this, right? And Americans are like, oh. uh, <laughs> this is These are like night garments. You can't do that. So there are some differences there. Respect those differences. They do things differently, OK? Um, it may not be the way I like to do things. It may not be the way I would run a business or a hotel or a restaurant. But I'm in their country. These are their rules. This is the way they have done it. And this is what they choose. So we have to be kind of um, understanding of that. And um, I think you have to learn how to take the good with the bad. You will not go on any of these tours and say everything was perfect. It, you just won't. You have to realize that there are going to be some missteps. There are going to be some inconveniences. There are going to be some things where you go, oh, man. Um, I mean, we, we went to Spain one year, and our luggage went to Belgium. Uh, yeah, and it was like two days before we got the bag, and this one poor girl didn't get her bag until the last day of the tour. Yeah, it was following us on the road all through you know, Spain. It finally caught us. Uh, but what we did was we stopped, we all pitched in a little bit, helped her get some clothing and some toiletries, and it was fine. I mean, I said, you know, if this, if this kid can, can have a great attitude, anybody can. She didn't even have her, her stuff with her, right? So we helped out, and we help each other, and we watch out for each other. But you, there are going to be inconveniences. There are going to be aggravations. We just have to roll with it, OK? We once had uh, a delay, and we missed our flight because of fog. And uh, they flew us into Madrid. It was Madrid. Yeah, it was Madrid. Um, and I said, what am I going to do with 60 people who are hungry and have no hotel? Uh, but the airline put us up. It was a great hotel. It was, it was a really great hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited buffet. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it worked out fine, right? Just kind of roll with the punches. Be easy going. Be laid back. It's OK. Don't get uptight, right? I'll do that for you. Right? <laughs> I'll have a heart attack, not you, OK? Um, Word of caution, group travel. Um, when you travel on your own, you can just go do your own thing, right? But when you travel with a group, think about it for a moment. I want you all to think about this, because it's very, very important. Um, we're obligated to treat each other with respect and courtesy. The last thing we want is like a civil war on one of these buses between groups of people, OK? This is not a good thing, OK? We're obligated to be punctual. This is really important, very, very important. Because you can't say, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to do x. The bus is supposed to meet back at 5 o'clock, whatever. I'll get back when I get back. 
Oh no, 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 you can't do that. This is group travel. It means that you have signed on understanding that you have an obligation to be timely for other people. Because think about it, if you're 10 minutes late, then that makes everybody else 10 minutes late, which is really, really bad. We have had instances where we missed really great opportunities to do something because one person on the bus was late getting to the bus. Um, we, had a, we had a really big missed opportunity. We were gonna take a ferry in Ireland and we missed the ferry which meant that we had to drive one more hour around that lake, right? Which burned an hour off of everybody's free time for that night. So you don't want to do that. You want to think, okay, if Dr. Litton says we have to meet back in the bus at five, at 4.45, I need to be heading to the bus, right? So that we're all back on time. We do our head counts and we're on our way. Believe me, it maximizes your time and you want that. Okay? There's nothing more aggravating than somebody on the tour who chronically is late or chronically is not listening to the instructions and where are we meeting, when are we meeting, what's going on. That's not a great thing. Okay? Um, be reasonable in dealing with changes and minor inconvenience. Um, make sure that you follow the directions and requests of our tour leaders and tour directors. We're not asking you to do anything unless it's in your best interest and your safety. Okay? Uh, but we do need you to do that. Um, we don't want you to engage in any kind of behavior that puts you at risk or puts other people at risk, okay? And then we're obligated to obey the laws of that country even if we disagree with those laws, right? Remember that guest thing? I want people to come, whenever we, I take groups of college students, I want people in that country when we leave to say, that was a great bunch of people. They were really good, you know? Those were some of the best people that were guests in our country that I've ever seen. You know, these American people are pretty cool people, right? I, I want that, I really do. Especially since we're representing our schools here, okay? Very, very important that we do that. Uh, the biggest problem is people who aren't punctual, okay? And you'll see me rant about that in a paragraph which I will skim over. Um, <laughs> there are some things, and this is very important, there are some things that can get you sent home prematurely, okay? Everybody signed a terms and conditions form there's nothing on there that's outrageously restrictive. In fact, we treat you all as adults. We don't expect you to be, you know, we don't have a set curfew. But we do ask, ask you to do some reasonable things. If you're going out in the evening, tell someone who's staying back at the hotel where you're going. Go with a group, not by yourself, and group we define as four people, okay? When you're out and about, make sure that you have a copy or have a card for the hotel and that you have one of our cell phone numbers written on the back of that card. Make sure that you have cash, okay, so that you can get back, and make sure that you watch out for each other while you're out and about. Some of this is just common sense, and you know this, right? I think it's like, well, hey, let's, uh, let's go out on the dance floor and, floor and leave our drinks totally unattended. <laughs> no, uh, we don't do this. Um, I'm going to the bathroom all by myself. I'll be back in 20 minutes, right, at a strange club where I don't know anyone. No, bad idea, right? So we have to be careful with each other, watch out for each other, and keep people informed. If someone's feeling sick, if someone's not behaving the way they ought to, they don't seem to be quite normal, you have an obligation to tell one of the leaders. I had a student once who was taking lots and lots of diet pills and not eating, and her pupils were unbelievably dilated. And some students came to me and said, I think you need to take a look at this young lady. And I sat down and said, if I don't see you eating a decent meal and those pupils going back to normal here in about 12 hours, we're going home, kid. Um, and so everything was okay, but uh, you have an obligation. I can't intervene if I don't know, right? And the same thing with our leadership here. So it's not, it's not designed to kind of keep tabs on you, treat you like you're in middle school. That's not the deal. The deal is, hey, um, I'll give you another example. We had a couple of people who, uh, the hotel locked the door at 12 o'clock, at midnight. Uh, these folks weren't back by then. Um, no one called to tell us that they weren't back. So at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning, the roommates say, where's Sally, where's Jane? We had no idea. We didn't know where they were. We didn't know what was <laughs> going on. We were freaking out. Visions of unemployment this were is, passing before our This was the day I realized I was writing my resignation. I was like, I quit my job, I got fired, <laughs> all because Betsy didn't come home. This is going to be on like the nightly news, yeah. American college students I was missing. Planning. <laughs> 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 I was planning that. Oh. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was, but, but you know how we, faith, we, we tracked them down on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had checked in. They had checked in at a coffee shop. They had spent all night with a couple of v, uh, Viennese college students, and they were chatting. Um, and it's like... Uh, perfectly innocent. It, it was, but it was... anything wrong. It was perfectly innocent and perfectly stupid. stupid. <laughs> uh, and the next day, we were dead. 
because I was so mad. Oh, it was not fun. So you gotta be mindful because what you do impacts all these other people. That's what I'm saying about this travel, right? Everything you do is gonna have an impact on other people. And sometimes it's stuff that doesn't occur to you. You think, well, I know he's good enough. I'm just gonna stay up at the coffee shop blogging all night. Well, like if your roommate comes running down the hall saying, oh, she's been kidnapped and it's been police. Then we're gonna panic and look for you. And, and um, you know, the Viennese police are just not that, I don't know. <laughs> they just don't have that fire under them. Look around, We're gonna go into what, yeah, what I wanna do is just kind of point out that this document exists, okay? That's the first thing I wanna do. I want you all to go and read through it. We're gonna break down some different aspects of it shortly. There's information in here about what to bring. That's gonna go over some packing uh, next. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. There's stuff in her handout, which is also on this Blackboard site. Um, and then there's money details. I'm going to do that later. Uh, safety details, which is what Gretchen's going to go through. Um, but I want to describe for you just a little bit here about the process of, of how we travel as a group. Okay, and this is very important. And you're gonna, you you got to get used to this because if you say, this is so weird, but, uh, but it has to happen this way and, and, or we end up losing people. Okay? Beth, you want to stand up and demonstrate the gate? All right. Here's what we do, okay? Now, whenever we go someplace from point A to point B, this is our method, okay? So we all get on the plane, and you'll see Beth and me, Gretchen and Beth, whoever, and we'll go like this. And you have to walk through the gate, okay? One, two, three, we'll make you go. Right? Now, we do that because it is the most effective and most and the quickest way to do a head count. Okay? Because if you do twos, you'll lose count. Or if you say, hey, look around, see if your roommate's here. Anybody missing a roommate? And then if the whole room is gone, it's like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Four people left in Australia or whatever. Uh, that's, a bad, that's a bad plan. So the gate works really well. But this is how we use it, okay? So when we, let's, let's say that we're going to connect in, um, in uh, Newark. Okay? We're going to go to Dallas. We're going to connect in Newark. What we do is we say, okay, guys, when we get off the plane, you don't go anywhere. You just stay at the gate when you get off. Get out of everybody's way, but stay at the gate, okay? Then we'll do a gate, okay, or a bridge, or whatever we call it, and we'll head count. Still, you don't go anywhere yet. You don't go to the bathroom, you don't go get a drink of water, you don't go buy a magazine or anything like that until we do the head count. And then when we're all there, then we say, we're going to gate B12 or whatever. Go directly to B12, then we do another head count, Right? To make sure we all made it. And that's when we say, okay, in 45 minutes, meet back at the gate. Now you have free time, right? But we don't release people to go, because here's what's happened. Here's what happens. People get off the plane first and they say, it'll take them 10 minutes to get off. I'm just going to go to the bathroom, honey. And then they run off to the bathroom <laughs> and we do our count. And bathroom girl is gone. <laughs> and we go into the plane and we check and she's not there. And, who, and so then three people say, we'll go find her. I'm sure she's in <laughs> So the search party goes out. And guess what happens right after the search party? The bathroom girl comes back. <laughs> and then we say, now we've got to go find the search party. <laughs> Where are they? Well, they went to the bathroom and didn't see you. So now they're down at the Chili's. And, uh, you know, believe me. You want to do your business, take care of stuff before we do our head counts. But once we've done head count one, and we did, you can't leave the group until we get to the next spot. Then we do the head count again. Then we release you. That's how we do things. And it's, you have to be very attentive. And we don't lose people that way. And we're much faster. We make it to our connections. We make it to where we're going. And uh, so, so hang tight and, and follow the methodology. We'll go over it more when we're at the airport and everything. Um, typically, when you go into a new country, you go through immigration, where you show your passport. Then you go through customs. When you arrive in a country, you don't have anything to declare. You're not, you're not bringing in imported goods. You're just bringing in your property. So you really, they just wave you through, or there's usually not even a guy there. Um, you pick up your luggage, and you just go on through. When we come back to the United States, however, we'll have to go through immigration. We'll then go pick up our bag. Then we'll go through customs. At customs, they say, do you have anything to declare? What you declare is any merchandise that's over $1,000 or of a restricted nature, okay? Um, if you are 21 or over, you can bring back one liter of alcohol. It could be wine, could be whatever. If you have more than one liter, you have to declare it. Now, declaring simply means paying taxes on it, but it also means being there an hour. 
Okay? So please don't have anything to declare. Because <laughs> it's a pain, okay? So come back with a thousand dollars or less worth of stuff and come back with, if you're 21 or over, only one liter of alcohol, okay? Please do, okay? No drug paraphernalia, which might be legal to buy in Europe, but, isn't the, but all the dogs at the airport know what it smells like, so be careful. Um, so we come back, we don't have anything to declare, and we go on our merry way and everything. We'll talk about that a little more when we get over there, but a uh, few, few pointers there. On the luggage, you have to pay close attention to packing things um, uh, so that the weight does not put us over. We're going to have two very full buses, and so as a result, we really have got to make sure that the weight is correct. The bus weight for bags is more restricted than the airline, right? Because planes hold more bags than buses. <laughs> right? So you say, but Delta says I can bring 75 pounds. Yes, but the bus man says, no, don't do that, bring 30, okay? <laughs> because I can't stuff it in under the bus, okay? So be aware of that, a couple of other things. I've got some things down here on things like telephones, and meals, and shopping, and I'll go over a little bit more than that, of that later. Alcohol is always an issue. Um, uh, our, our policy has always been obey the laws of the country that you're in. If you decide that you are going to partake of alcoholic beverages, if you do so in excess, we will send you home. Right? But alcohol is part of the culture in many of these countries, and people generally think that people who overdrink are boorish, nasty, poor social skills. Uh, they really look down their nose on people who, who drink too much, so don't be one of those people, okay? Uh, but secondly, it's, it's, uh, it's a violation of university policy, so, so be very careful about that. We'll go over a little bit more of that later. But I want to talk to you, uh, what, I, what I want is to have Beth come up and talk to you a little bit about, about packing. And